Hello guys, welcome to this video tutorial on AWS Lambda. Before going forward, if you are new to this channel, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel and also press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos. In this video, we will learn about serverless. We will also learn about AWS Lambda at a very high level and what are the Lambda capabilities and its pricing. At last, we will go through a demo. So what is serverless computing? Serverless computing allows you to build and run your applications and services without thinking about the servers. However, your application still runs on the server, but all the server management and provisioning is taken care by AWS. At the core of serverless computing is AWS Lambda, which lets you run your code without provisioning or managing servers. So let's see what AWS Lambda is. AWS Lambda is a serverless compute service, which lets you run your code without provisioning and managing the servers. AWS Lambda executes your code only when needed and scales automatically from few requests per day to thousand requests per second. So you don't have to do any manual scaling. AWS does it automatically for you. Pay only for compute time you consume. So you have to pay only for the compute time you consume. Suppose your Lambda is running for two minutes. You just have to pay for two minutes. You don't have to pay for the whole day. Whenever a Lambda runs, you are charged for only for the time your Lambda runs. You don't have to pay for your code which is not running or when it is not running. With AWS Lambda, you can run code for virtually any type of application or backend service, all with zero administration. AWS Lambda runs your code on high availability compute infrastructure. It performs all the administration of the compute resources, including server and operating system maintenance, capacity provisioning, automatic scaling, code monitoring, and logging for you. You don't have to worry about anything. You can manage your code monitoring, code logging. You can see everything on the AWS console. All you need to do is you have to code in one of the languages that AWS Lambda supports. As if now, AWS Lambda supports all these five programming languages, which is Node.js, Python, Ruby, Java, Go. You can use AWS Lambda to run your code in response to events such as changes to your data in Amazon S3 bucket or Amazon DynamoDB table, or response to HTTP request using Amazon API Gateway, or invoke your code using API calls made using AWS SDK. We will talk about API Gateway in subsequent lectures. So you can run your code in response to any of these events. Now let's see what are the AWS Lambda capabilities. You can easily build data processing triggers for AWS services like Amazon S3 or Amazon DynamoDB using AWS Lambda. Or you can also process streaming data stored in Kinesis streams or you can build serverless applications composed of functions that are triggered by events or automatically deploy them using code pipeline and code build. We will talk about code pipeline and code build in subsequent lectures. Now let's see about AWS pricing. We can click on this URL to see what AWS pricing is. AWS charges prices per 100 milliseconds. So if your code is running for 87 milliseconds, it will charge you to the nearest 100 milliseconds. Now we will log into AWS console and we'll see a quick demo on AWS Lambda. Let's log into AWS console. So as you can see, I have logged into AWS console. We'll go on the top services and we'll search for the Lambda here. As we can see, here we can find Lambda or you can also search through a search bar here. Click on Lambda. You will be redirected to this screen. Create on create function. We'll start with author from scratch. Here we can give our function name, the Lambda function name. 
will name it as my first lambda. Here we can select the target runtime. As I said, AWS supports all these languages. We will select Python 3.7. We can also run in Ruby, Node.js, Java, .NET, but for this video, we will select Python 3.7. Let's click on create function. So as we can see that successfully created the function my first lambda. So we click on this lambda function and we go down. Here is our first code. AWS Lambda. Whenever we create a first demo function on AWS Lambda here, it gives us with this dummy code. We can change this code based on our requirement. So as you can see, if you have to test this code, you can just test it by clicking on this test on the top right corner. We'll click on test. We will run this Lambda here. We will name it as sample event create. Now we have to test this Lambda code whether it is running or not. We will click on test and we can see on the top execution result succeeded. So it gives us this response status code 200 body hello from Lambda. This is what is written here. If we have to return anything else, We will change it to hello from study utils. We will save it. We will again test it. As we can see here, our output change from hello from study utils. We can also print anything in the logs. If we have to change the response here, instead of returning the response, we can print hello from study utils let's save it after that you can just click on test on the top you can see the response is null but since we are not returning anything but in the log output here it prints hello from study util you can also see the logs from monitoring view logs in CloudWatch. We'll talk about CloudWatch in subsequent lectures. But you can see our Lambda, we ran Lambda three times. You can see the date and time. And these are the logs which gets printed here. So this is the print which I did hello from study utils. We go back. For this log, we didn't print anything, although we still got the response. So we go back. So this was our first Lambda and we can create similarly more Lambda functions here by creating create function and we can select any of the programming languages which are available here. So if we go to monitoring tab here, these are the CloudWatch metrics. Here we can see the invocations of our Lambda, the duration, error count or success rate, throttling, iterator age, and concurrent executions. As we can see here, we can see a dot here. We can see one point. This is one. So our invocation count is one here. Our Lambda ran at this particular time for one time. And the concurrent execution was maximum at one at this particular time. 